Hi, my name is Matt Hatel Masri, and today I'll show you how you can use MongoDB with an ASP.NET Web API application. In this tutorial, I will be using Docker for the database. I will be running a MongoDB container in Docker, and for .NET, I will be using .NET version 6.0. The editor that I will be using in this demonstration is simply Visual Studio Code. So let's get started. As you can see here, I have Docker Desktop running on my Mac. So let me go into a terminal window and I'm going to run an instance of the Docker image for Mongo. And the command for that goes like this. I'll go docker run minus p to map the ports. And on my machine, I will be using port 27777, which will be mapped internally to port 27017, which is the default port number for MongoDB. And the name of the container, I'm just going to call it MGO for Mongo, and it will run as a daemon. And I'm going to use a Docker image Mongo version 4.1.6. So let's hit enter and get this container running. And you can see here that it has started. Just to make sure that it's started, we can go Docker PS and you will see here that the Mongo container is running and it's been running for 11 seconds. Now, I will be going into a bash session inside of the container and will create a MongoDB called school DB and I'll add some sample data into there. So to go into an interactive session inside of the container, I will use the command docker exec minus it and I'm going into this mgo container because I already called it mgo as you can see here and I'm going to go into a bash session and now I'm inside of the container. I'll call in the mongo command line interface command. It will take me into a mongo session. I will create a database called school db just by saying use school db and i will then add some sample data into this school db database i will create six documents in this mongodb database called students db this is the command that i will execute in the command line interface and it will create a collection called students and it's going to insert many documents. The first document, first name is Sue, last name is Fox, school is business and there are six other documents that I will create. So I'll just copy this command here and go into the command line interface, paste this and enter and you will see here that it has indeed created these four documents and these are the object IDs for each of the documents that were created. If I want to test that my documents are indeed in the database, I can say go to the database and look at the student's collection and I can say find and hit enter. And you can see the data is in the database. Now to exit the CLI, I can type in exit and to exit the bash session, I'm going to hit exit again. And now I'm on the host computer. Let us now create an ASP.NET Web API application. This we can do by going into a terminal window and typing the .NET command new web API because it's the web API template that we want to use and we want to use the specific .NET framework version of NET 6.0 and we want that to be created in an output directory called ASP Mongo API. Hit enter. This will create for us a web API app. Let me go into this folder and now if I want to make sure that this thing is running I can go .NET run and it should start for me the application. I'm going to copy this address and go into a browser like this and the API is at weather for cast. So this is the sample API that is given to you when you create a web API application using the standard template. I'll 
close my browser and stop my server here by hitting Control C. Now, because we want to use MongoDB, I need to install the MongoDB NuGet package. And that would be .NET add package. And the driver is called Mongo db.driver and I want a specific version just to make sure I, I get what I want 2.14.1 if you're doing this maybe with version 7 of ASP.NET or something you can use a different version but this is the version that I know works so I decided to use this specific version so hit enter it's going to install for me this NuGet package it's about time to do some serious editing so I'm going to open up this particular application in VS Code by typing code dot and this is VS Code. It says here required assets to build and debug are missing. So I'm going to say yes, add them. And it's going to build my app. As you can see, it created the bin and the OBJ folders. I will create a model to represent my schema for the school collection in the Mongo database. So let me add here a new folder and I'll just call it models. And in this models folder, I will create a new C sharp class, which I will just simply call student because my data represents students. And the new syntax for namespace is just to put a semicolon there and get rid of the braces. And let's push this back. It's a syntax that I prefer. I will create four fields that match the schema of the student's collection in the database. So let's do that. I will create a property here, which I will call ID, and it's going to be a nullable string. And I'll just call that simply ID. And I have three other fields that I want to add, and they're all strings. So I'm just going to copy this and rename them. The second field is first name. The third field is last name. And the last field is simply school. Since I'm going to be using MongoDB, I can import some namespaces here. And these are the two namespaces I want to import using MongoDB BSON and using MongoDB BSON serialization attributes. Now, I have to indicate that this field is an object ID. The way to do that is you annotate it with BSON ID. You also need to indicate that it is indeed the object ID. So the way to do that is BSON representation. And then here you go, BSON type dot object ID. This specifies very clearly that this field is the object ID. The next thing we might want to do is we might want to create an alias name for the school field. And this is really not necessary, but I just want to show you that you can create an alias for any field. So let's say instead of school, I want this to be department and department is only the alias in my app. So I'm going to say to my model that this BSON element, it is actually school in the actual database. So the school field will be renamed as department in my app. It's a good trick to know when you're dealing with MongoDB. I need to tell my application how to connect to MongoDB. In other words, I need to tell it the connection string to talk to the database, the name of the database, and the name of the collection, which is the student's collection. So I will be entering this information in the app settings.json file. So let me copy this and go to my app settings.json and put this in here. And as you can see, I have a section here called student db settings. The connection string is this. And if you remember, I'm using ports 27777 that is exposed externally to my operating system. The database name is SchoolDB and the collection name is Students. I will create a class which I will call Students DB Settings and it will have these three properties. This is simply so that it helps me read these properties from the app settings.json file. So in my models folder, I'll create a new class here and let me just call it students db 
settings and here's my class and I will use the new syntax for namespaces again by simply putting a semicolon at the end of that and getting rid of these braces and in here I will create three properties the first one is string and it represents the connection string and here I'm going to say that it is nullable I can do this or I can say that this the default value is null like this so I'll copy these twice and cater for the other properties the database name and the collection name next in order to read from the app settings.json file I'm going to add this line of code in my program.cs and basically this says that we're going to use this class for reading configuration settings from app settings and this specific section so I'll take this copy it and put it in my program.cs just before this line here builder build right there and of course I need to resolve this so I'm going to hit command dot here and import this namespace this statement allows me to use dependency injection to get at these settings in the app settings.json the next thing I want to do is to create a class which I will call student service I will create a new folder here and I'll call it services and inside of this services folder I'll create a new class which I will call students service and let me do the same thing I did before my namespace is just going to be on that first line and I'll push back the rest of the code since I want to use dependency injection I will create a constructor here and let me leave this blank for the moment I will declare an instance variable here for my students collection so I'm going to do private read only I mongo collection student this I mongo collection represents a collection in the mongodb database so I will name a local variable called students I need to resolve this iMongo collection and it uses the MongoDB driver and I also need to put valid parameters in the constructor I'll be using dependency injection so my dependency injection parameters I options based on students DB settings and I'll just call this students DB setting let me resolve this I options so that's resolved and in here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the connection string to get an instance of mongo client so I'll go var mongo client equals to I'll instantiate a new mongo client object and this will simply read from the students database settings the value of the connection string that should do it like this I get an instance of my mongo client by the way this needs to be resolved too that should take care of that the next thing from the mongo client object from here I'm going to get an instance of the actual database the way to do that is var mongo database database equals to we're going to use the mongo client and call get database and from this object students db settings again I will use it to read the database name which is this one here finally using this mongo database I can get a handle to the collection itself so my collection is this object here that I declared so I'm going to call that object students collection equals to mongo database and I'll call get collection based on the student class and here I'm going to use again the students db settings dot value dot the now I'm experiencing an error here let me see what it says it says cannot implicitly convert type student to student service and I think I made a mistake here that this should be student not student service 
and that goes away. So that was the mistake I made. So now my constructor is ready to go and it gets me the right object for my student's collection. Before we forget, we need to add the student service as a singleton and that's done in the program.cs. So let's come right before this line, builder.build, we add this as a singleton. So you'd go builder.services.add singleton and you want to add the student's service as a singleton. Student's service. And you need to resolve the student service here. And that should do it. The student service class would have all the methods for updating, deleting, retrieving, and inserting data. So let's start with the method we need to have in order to retrieve data. And that would be simply public, and it's going to be async. Since it's using async, we have to use a task object, and this task object will return a list of student objects. The method name is called get async, and we're going to use arrow notation. Of course, we have to await, so I'm going to type in await here. And we're going to use the students collection to call the find method, which is pretty much standard in MongoDB. And in here, we can say given a student, the student object has to be true. In other words, it shouldn't be null. And we're going to convert this to list async. The next thing we need to do is maybe insert some data. I'm going to copy and paste the code for the rest of the methods that we need to have in this service. Here goes. I will have a method here that is get async as well, but it takes as an argument the object ID. And in this particular case, I'm going to search given an object ID I'm going to make sure that it is the same as the object ID in the database. And this returns one object. This would be for inserting data. A student object gets passed as an argument to this method. And here you use the method insert one async and you pass in the new student object. The next one is update. Update takes two parameters. One is the ID and one is the student object. So you're going to first search for an object with ID being the one that's being passed here and you're going to replace that with this updated student object. Finally, if you want to remove a student, all you need is the ID. So you're going to call the delete one async method of the collection and pass it the ID by making sure that the ID that comes as an argument is equal to the ID of the object in the database. So now these are pretty much the methods that are needed to interact with the database for purposes of retrieving, adding, updating, and deleting data. The last thing we need to do now is to create the API controller for doing all the web API stuff. That should be easy because now we have our service class that does most of the heavy lifting. Let's add a controller. So I'm going to come to the controllers folder, do new C sharp class and call this the students controller. And here we go. Again, like I did before, I'm just going to put a semicolon at the end of that namespace statement and move all of this back. Since this is going to be an API controller, we have to annotate the controller with API controller. And of course, this needs to be resolved. And another thing we need to add to the controller is the route. So you can type in route here. And the route we want to use is API slash and controller here in square brackets. This means that in order to hit this controller, we need to use the route API slash students simple as that. Now, we need to inherit from controller base here because this is going to be a controller. Let us add an instance variable that we will use for our dependency injection with regard to student service. So 
we're going to create an instance variable private read only students service and our local variable will be called students service with an underscore in front of the name we need to resolve this and let's create a constructor we can use the arrow syntax for a constructor so it will be public students controller and it takes as an argument students service and student service in here as the parameter and we'll use arrow notation to say that the instance variable student service takes its value from the argument that's being passed. I'm going to copy and paste all the web API methods for get, post, put, and delete. And here it is. So the get method at the top here will get all my students. Let me resolve these namespaces first and that takes away all the errors so if you look at this method here this is a get method that returns all the students because it goes to the service and calls the get async method this get method here retrieves one student so the id of the student is passed to the get async method of student service it returns a student if it cannot find it it will return not found otherwise to return the student. This is the post method. It receives as an argument a student object and it calls the student service get async method and passes the student object. We're going to return simply a new student object here. This is the put method. The put method takes two arguments, the ID and the updated student. The first thing we do is find the student. If the student cannot be found, you're going to return a not found response. Otherwise, we're going to update the student. Finally, the delete method simply takes the ID. We find the student. If the student is not found, return a not found status. Otherwise, the student is removed by passing the ID. So this completes our student's controller. So now we can try these using Postman. So I'm going to start my app again, and let's use Postman here to check this thing out. So I'm going to start Postman. Here it is. Let me paste the URL, follow that by API students, and make sure that I'm using the get method, which I am, click on send, and there we are, we get our students. Let's add a student. So what I'll do is I'm going to copy one of these student objects, copy, change this to post, and for body, I'm going to use row and JSON, and I'm just gonna paste this here. To add a student, I don't need to pass the ID because that's being generated automatically. So let me call my student first name simply FFFF, the last name LLLL, and the department. Notice that when I retrieve the data, even though it is school in the database here, its alias is department. So I'm just going to put four Ds here and send. And you can see I get a 201 created here, which is good news. And this is the object that was created. So let me do an update now. So I'm going to copy this, come here, paste it instead of this. And to do an update, I chose put and I pass the ID like this. And let's make a couple of changes here. Let me change first name to simple FN, last name to LN, and this one to DEPT for departments. So let me click on send. And again, you get a 204 means it is successful. Let's do a get by this ID. Click on send and indeed we get the updated data. Now the easiest to do is delete. So I'm going to choose delete and pass API students and the ID and click on send. And I get a 204, which means successful. So now if I go and do a get on all my students, I shouldn't see the student that I played around with and that student is not there. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it useful, please give 
this video a thumbs up. Thank you and see you on the next video. Bye.